So let's talk about tenacity, leading with tenacity and grit. Um, Tenacity is a quality displayed by someone who just won't quit, who keeps trying until they reach their goal. Um, Grit is a person who has passion and perseverance. Goals are set and followed through, a person who really works hard uh, to follow through on commitments. But we all know leading with tenacity and grit is not always easy. Um, Often in the professional world, we as women defer to the biggest voices in the rooms. We often allow our presence to be diminished and apologize more than we should. Everyone at BBH knows I have a rule, do not apologize unless you've offended someone. Um, So Kamala, you are amazing. (laughs) You have tenure at some of the biggest of the biggest companies, Facebook, Google, CAA, ICM, and now You are at Lionsgate, wow, as the head of inclusive content for the Motion Picture Group, a newly created role, another first for you. So first of all, congratulations. We need to take a moment to acknowledge your success. Um, So it's just incredible, no surprise for me. Um, But I wanna ask you if you can share how you've been able to navigate successfully through very, very layered organizations, especially as a, a black woman. Yeah, absolutely. So when you were defining tenacity, I was like, that is not only is that me, but that has been brought up in every performance review, but not always as a positive. Uh One of the things that I found is that because people expect women to defer, to back off their point, to cede the floor, I don't. And that can be very tough. And I will say that, um, navigating with tenacity and grit, especially as a woman, is not only more important, but it's more difficult. The the playing field isn't level and people are always surprised when you hold on to your point. And so I, I've so many experienced this so many times and sort of how I've navigated, like I can think back to an experience when I was pretty early in my career and, you know, um, we were going back and forth on a certain campaign for a product I was working on. And I was the only one on the team that had worked in the industry that they were discussing. Yet I was getting mansplained, argued down by all of these men who didn't have the experience that I was referring to. And I got a note on the side from one of my colleagues saying, I think you should back off now. Like you guys are going back and forth on email a lot. And I asked them, I was like, did you send him that note as well? And there was silence. And so I think that um, part of what you have to do is find the ways to point out the unlevel playing field in a way that sparks curiosity for people Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. as opposed to a way that maybe shuts them down. Like, I think that um, I constantly, I know that bias is always in the room in one way or another. That is, that is just a fact of life, but it is often invisible. And part of the way it stays invisible is that it's never discussed. And so I try to really focus on finding ways to build relationships with people that allow me to have the intimacy to say, hey, I noticed this. Have you ever considered that? Or I know we're talking about representation in front of the camera, but could it be at all related to the fact that 90% of people that lead studios are white? Is that a part of it? Or do you think it might be unrelated? You know, just pointing out some of those things that are facts, but are not acknowledged because once a fact is actually said out loud and acknowledged, we can decide whether or not we wanna actually continue in that direction or if we wanna move in a different path. I think, you know, when you're not paying attention, the status quo just feels like a tsunami coming at you and it's Mm -hmm. it's just carrying you along in a certain direction. But when you actually take a moment to think about the fact that the status quo was created and it can be dismantled and recreated if we start to pay attention to it, I think then things can really start to change. Amazing, incredible. Um, So tell us, you know, you're walking into this huge role yeah and it's a first it's they basically created it for you so tell us like what 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 do you do like what's your day-to-day what are what are you responsible for in this you know I love a white space it's it's, and I know you love a white space as well um but yeah like what you know what are you creating how do you even get this new role exactly like can you give us the headlines totally (laughs) so you know when I walked in um and I went through a really amazing process actually that helped me to learn a lot about our leaders and why they wanted to create this but when I walked in I think that we basically had a title 
right? We were like head of inclusive content. Like we want you to be a part of making our studio more diverse and inclusive with respect to the content we put out. But the how is up to you, which I love. And, you know, I spent the first few months really just trying to understand the culture, the context, the people, the pipeline, all of those things. And then I just started saying as a joke, but almost as a reminder to people when they would ask me what I was doing, I would say, well, there's nothing but white space here, figuratively and literally. And so where do we begin? So I think of my, my role in sort of two halves. So one is on the content side. And I work really closely with our development executives and our production executives and our acquisition executives, really interrogating what is our pipeline of content? Who are we getting it from? Who are the storytellers that we have relationships with? What are the stories that are coming in? I did a deep dive on everything in our development slate. And for a studio, that represents two to three years of content. So we need to know now, not only yes, we need to build more relationships with people to make a movie that will come out in three years. What about the movie that we're working on right now? Can that become more inclusive? Can that become more diverse? Can we have a conversation with the filmmaker about some blind spots? So that's one half. And then the other half is just partnering with our marketing team because how a film is brought to market needs to be diverse and inclusive. As a function, marketing hasn't been done in an inclusive way because very few functions have. So when you start asking about who are the agencies we're working with? Who are the owners of those agencies? What are the perspectives they're bringing? And you notice very quickly that for a lot of companies, you know, they will, they will entrust a white owned agency to work on absolutely any campaign to reach anybody in the world but they will only seek out a black owned agency or a Latinx owned agency or an Asian agency when they have a film that centers those people. That is totally skewed. That puts a ceiling on the growth potential of those companies. And it discounts the fact that when you are working with someone from an underrepresented group, not only do they have their perspective, but of course they understand the mainstream because they have to. And so right. you're actually not getting half of a marketer. You're getting two times a marketer. And so we need to be pushing that more and more and trying to really expose some of those myths and narratives that have held us back and really talk about what are the plans. As I've told our teams and, and my like colleagues, do better is not a plan. Mm -hmm. right? we, we can't just commit to doing better. We need to know, well, what is better? Mm -hmm. What are the steps? What are the strategies? What are the processes? And how will we measure it? Because from what I can tell, I've never worked at a company that didn't care about diversity, inclusion, and equity, and yet here we are. So we must need to do something differently. Powerful. Wow. Well, I am so glad you're there. Thank you. I, I feel like I'm in my dream job. I'm, I'm so happy and energized, energized every day. Amazing. Oh. Well, I, I, I will be sitting on the sideline watching and cheering you along and leaning in in any way, any way I can to support I believe in what you're doing, so. Thank you. Kamala, can I ask you a question? Of course, Lindsay. I'm curious, um, I'm curious what other industries, we were chatting earlier about my cloning machine that is still broken. If, I, <laughs> if we could clone what you do and, and bring it to more industries, to more companies, what industries do you think like needs this more than others? Yeah, what a great question. So, I mean, for sure on the um, mass media side, so whether it is film, TV, series, et cetera, it's so important to start to have a different type of conversation. But then I would say um, big brands need this as well. Advertising agencies need this as well. I think that, you know, we don't think about the power of the stories that we tell and the fact that we're telling stories all the time. So I loved hearing the fact that, you know, what, what Jen and the team at the National Women's History Museum are doing. But think about the fact that when we think about history, if one were to look at the average textbook, what percentage of it represents the contributions of women? Were women just solely home knitting? They weren't doing anything of note. Um, you know, what are what's the percentage representation of people of color in history? You would think that you know black people began as slaves; that we had no history prior to that. Mm -hmm. And then you know, in in 1960 or 1950 something, Martin Luther King stood up and gave a speech. Rosa Parks sat in a seat, and then it was done. Right. What if I told you that there's enough black history to tell all year long instead of in the shortest month of the year? What if there was enough women's history to consume that it exceeded March? Absolutely, those things are true. So I think that I haven't met an industry yet, whether it is finance, advertising, consumer packaged goods, that is appropriately representing um, their company and building their company in an inclusive way. And we have to start to challenge whether or not is it okay 
that 90% of the leaders of every industry are male and roughly the same percentage are white. And what are we missing? We can't expect to become a totally new country, build a new company, do all of these things. Like we're gonna suddenly become diverse, inclusive and representative, but we're gonna keep all the same people, all the same policies, all the same practices. That's not true. So every single company I think can think about where are the spaces where I have a blind spot? And if you're sitting around a table where most of the people look like you, the blind spots are endless and you'll never know them until you bring new people in the room. I love that. And I love what you said earlier about um, really wielding curiosity yeah. because I think, I think you can weaponize epiphanies for people, yeah. right? I think I've been in the room with people where you say something and you can just see the expression on someone's face change when they recognize that they are kind of living in bias. Yeah. Um, and it's really powerful to, to kind of wield that in conversations. I've been asked a lot around board mandates recently, right? Mm -hmm. Like in California, there's a mandate that you need to have um, quotas on, on boards of directors and will that work? And it's so much more complicated that, than that, mm -hmm. right? Like there, there needs to be, there needs to be change from bottoms up and top down. And it can't right. just, you can't just say like, we're going to add a few people to the board mm -hmm. and we're good now, right? Like this needs right. to be embedded in the storytelling we are doing, in the brands that we are representing, in the people we are promoting. And it's not just about representation, it is about the inclusive inclusivity yes. and the equity. Um, and I think this is such a, a bigger, meatier topic yeah. that you're right, it deserves way more than a month or a day. Right. Absolutely. You know, when I think about Jackie and Liz, I, I want to pivot over to you. You know, women account for about 46% of the advertising uh, industry, working in the advertising in industry, but women aren't making it to that top level. Just 11% of creative directors are female. Um, it's a huge miss, um, as we all know, uh, especially with consumers, because I read that 85% of consumer spending is obviously controlled by women, yet women feel, about 91%, feel that advertisers don't understand them. So as female creative directors, you know, what has your experience been like? Um, do, do you see the beginning of the change that we seek, which is more balance, um, especially when it comes to the CD level and, and higher? Yes, I think, um, well, Jackie's been in the industry longer than I have, but in the past seven years, um, I've only been a creative director for, you know, not even a year now. Um, well, congratulations. But I've experienced kind of both. Thank you. Yes, I've experienced both sides. Um, the industry, especially in the earlier days, definitely had that boys club vibe. Um, I've experienced and encountered sexism as well. Um, but then there's there's that negativity. But if you focus on that, you're not gonna get to a, a brighter future. Where, I mean, my first job, I was hired by a powerhouse female VP who was a huge proponent of, of hiring and supporting women, um, female creatives, female creative teams, and then at BBH, um, I've had like past and present CDs and CCOs that really have, have kind of given us the, the opportunities, the good briefs, um, the autonomy of our projects and the ability to talk to clients that because we, we should. Um, I think it's all about, there is, there is progress and we need to keep progressing. It's as simple yeah. as having an open-minded leader in all honesty. This, this mm -hmm. can go across any industry. Who, who sees that women are not women, they're, they're in, for us, they're creatives. Don't give right. us a label, don't, don't call us ladies, don't call us girls. Mm -hmm. Like we, are, we have names and we are also just creatives. And I think just for women, for minorities, you're, you're allowing for more people to come to the table with different perspectives. Like don't just put women on lotion brands or tampon brands, um, give it to the men sometimes because they might have an interesting opinion too. I think we need to, Again, it's that really, it's that open-mindedness and willingness to, to give people who, you know, traditionally, historically, haven't been given all the, haven't been given all the shots that right. they, they deserve. And that would be really interesting right. to see what they come up with. So I think, um, you know, as we, as we continue, as we, as we progress, we're going to see the amazing success that comes out of that, of giving people the chance to, to just shine 
and really take it and run with it. And then I think all the assholes are just gonna eventually be phased out. So that's gonna be amazing for our industry and for honestly, the work that's gonna come out of it. We're gonna speak to people in the way that they wanna be spoken to. The, the 80 plus percent of female buyers are like, oh, they get me. <laughs> like, it's yeah, amazing. Exactly. I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be a really bright future that, you know, I, I challenge all minorities, all women to get involved. Like, it's a great time to, to speak up, ask for more and demand more, so. We need a follow-up panel. Bravo. Will the assholes get phased out? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I literally had so seen a lot of them. We'll work with that, yeah. yeah. Across all boards. <laughs> Let's work on crafting that because that would be a, a really interesting conversation. I am, uh, Jack. It's just uh, phase, guys. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Jackie, do you have anything to add? Um, Liz, Liz, you did such a great job. I, 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 would <laughs> add, I mean, we, in the past, like a couple years, I would say five years, it does feel like there has been like a shift a bit. Mm -hmm. So it is, does feel a little bit, um, less like a boys club. Um, and I have been noticing, especially when we get into production, there is a very like high demand for all types of creative <clears throat> women, you know, and right. for me, that's very refreshing. Like when we look for directors, colorists, sound engineers, editors, you know, I, we're noticing in the project now that we're working on, you know, they're all booked up. They're all in high demand and it, and it feels great. It's like, awesome. It's amazing. So there Incredible. is positive change going on. So that's good. Okay, good. And we have to keep driving it and breaking those glass ceilings. So